Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, it's June 9th, 2010. This over here, whoa, this, this is, this is day nine daily number 133, guys. Oh, I'm just going to rub my eyes, my tired little eyes. Okay, I'm not going to lie. I made it to the gym two days in a row. I'm pretty proud of myself. But, um, whoo, I went kind of early. I went at like, like 6 or 7 a.m. Because I'm trying to be a healthy person. And then, and then, I, I seriously hit probably like 2 o'clock. And I literally could not function anymore as a human being. I was too tired. But the problem is that at 2 p.m. I was at UCLA in a meeting. And, um... I was trying to be really, you know, involved and trying to be awake because I love the UCLA people I work with. So I wanted to do a good job for them. But my voice just started to just totally relax. Has this happened to you where you're in class or it's somewhere where you really can't sleep and your vocal cords are just like, screw you, we're going to bed. And you get that really deep, sultry, slumbery voice and it gets all cracky. It starts doing this. Ah... Uh... So I was there, and they're like, so Sean, what's the schedule for next week? I was like, oh, well, uh, we're going to do some back-end implementations. Uh, and I mean, um, I just, one, once I got into the car, because Daniel, the guy driving, has just like the tiniest car in the world. And I just like climbed into the back seat. It's like a two-door car. So I climbed right into the back seat and just like went to bed. And I'm huge. I'm six foot three, so I like hardly even fit back there. I didn't care. I was so happy just to be horizontal. I just like passed right out, and it was so bad because I was like all cramped in there. So every time he made like a right turn, like my neck would just get all smashed. I was like, Daniel, Daniel, stop turning right. Just don't, just don't turn right anymore, man. Because I, I, I kind of just say whatever feels okay when I'm really exhausted. I was like, Daniel, Daniel, dude. No, no more, no more turning right, man. Just don't, just don't turn right anymore. He's like, well, I gotta get on the freeway. How else are we gonna get home? I was like, shh, 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 shh. Just don't, just don't turn right, man. Just no, it's not okay. So, so we eventually made it home. I actually passed out like probably twenty seconds later. So, um, uh, so I was, he didn't, didn't have to worry about it. And then he was like, hey, Sean. I was like, that's okay. Just take the freeway, man. He's like, no, right, your house. So I like stumbled out and like fell into my bed like I, I didn't even have time to like take my left shoe off so I just like fell asleep with one shoe just like hanging off the bed and um I managed to be in a, a, a awake enough mental state to set my alarm for today um so I set it for 6 45 I like and I normally start playing music at like 6 50 and I woke up at 6 55 with my alarm having been going off for 10 minutes and I was just like uh, so I'm not gonna lie, man. Working out, I want to be I want to be a healthy person. I want to I want to lose weight because I weighed myself at the gym today, and I don't tell anyone this. It's a secret just between me and all two and a half thousand of you watching. It's just between us. I weigh 220 pounds. That's a lot of pounds. Now remember, I just said I was six three, but that's 75 inches, which means which means currently I'm two pounds per inch. So my, my PPI is a little bit higher than I I would so desire. Um, so I was trying to trying to work that out. I want to go to the gym. I want to drop that down. I want to be I want to be slender um, and appropriately um, sized. But I cannot stay awake. I just cannot stay awake. Oh man. So um, so this daily might be a little bit shorter than your average daily. That's, I think that's reasonable to assume. Um, but I was going to watch some, some replays from my replay vault. So, for instance, right here, I'm actually going to pause it. You'll notice I intentionally had my overlay back there a little bit. We're just going to rewind it back to the very beginning here. Uh, because, as you may note, I have special superpowers that allow me to watch replays. Ooh. Um, I was considering doing games of myself, but um, I... Again, I, I I woke up at 6:45, and um, there was there was 
two replays of mine that I wanted to show, but I just couldn't find them in time. So we are going to just be doing Z-Pucks vs. Dayfly from the Europe vs. Asia Showmatch series. Now, fortunately, these games are awesome. Um, and they're a really brilliant showcase of just strong, cool, fancy mech play. So they are um, an older patch, so the tanks do like a million, billion, bajillion damage. Jesus, look at the circles under my eyes. Look at the size of those circles. Now, one thing to note, I slept like a full eight, nine hours last night. It's not like I'm sleep deprived lately. It's just that my flimsy, weak, pale nerd body is so unable to lift little tiny pieces of metal that it's just, it's narking me out, man. I Seriously, wow. This is, I feel like I just took Valium and all I did was <laughs> pump on elliptical for a little while. Woo, baby. Oh, man. Getting in shape. Feeling good. So, I'm going to go ahead and check out a fancy little game. We do have Z-Pucks. Um, a Zerg player who is really fun to watch. I actually enjoy um, OBS and him quite a bit. Got the delight of uh, watching a few of his practice games and watching a few of his uh, Zotac Cup games. Just a nice um, macro Zerg. Likes getting his second queen out pretty early. And then we have Dayfly, the Asian superhero. Um, so, one thing... Um, to note is that Dayfly is an Asia server player, and this is, um, you know, Artosis always talks regularly about the solidness of everyone on the Asia servers, and this was a real delight for me to get the chance to showcase the series of matches, the Asia vs. Europe ones, because, I mean, these were styles of play that I, I just had not quite seen. Um, in some senses, a lot of the Asian players are stronger. Um, in some senses, not, but at the very least, it is a completely new style to me. So it is very, very cool to see. And I mean, a lot of people, a lot of people, okay, yeah, you know what? This is important. All right, you know, day nine, he's waking up, his thoughts are flowing. He is beginning to have verbal diarrhea. Just like, hey guys, I was having a thought. And it's all strategy and insight, yeah. Um, I was going to say something, wasn't I? I had a thought. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So one of my favorite analogies is that a good strategy is like a story. It has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And too often, players will um, think of the middle or uh, even the beginning or something. They rarely think of the end, but um, first. But still, they, they, they think of one of those and they leave the rest out. I mean, that is, um, that's the biggest issue. I mean, like, let's talk about a middle story, you know? They'll, they'll, they'll hear something like, mech is really good. And they'll go, okay, I guess I need to get a bunch of factories which a bu with a bunch of tanks and Hellions, and then I'm just the best player in the world. Half true. You need something that leads up to that in a reasonable fashion. Um, for instance, Terran vs. Protoss. If any of you saw me playing against Jinro in one of the earlier dailies, I was really pumped up that I'd finally beaten his mech. And the way he got his thing to be a legit middle, a legit middle where he had two factories with add-ons, or two factories with tech labs and two factories with reactors, the way he did that is that he opened with a barracks with a reactor and then got a factory with tanks and then got a starport with ravens. That's how he opened. And he had a nice little push as he expanded and then he pulled back. He had a good progression to his play. And what is delightful about seeing the top Asian players play, like a, a brilliant player like Dayfly, who was also a very talented Warcraft 3 player, is that he had this solid lead-up to a mech middle. So we're going to see it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, um... And what's what's nice is I'm, I'm just going to spoil a little bit for you. Dayfly is going to be doing an early mech push. He's going to be doing a nice little tank push at the front. But he is going to lead into a nice, solid middle game play. And let me make sure that I actually have my volume here. Yes, I do. All right. Well, at least I'm on the ball with some things today. But, you know, every so often I have a slow day. So he is going to be going for a push into um, solid standardness. And we're already noting, ooh, he's making a refinery before a barracks. Oh, fancy. We'll see how that influences things in a moment but you know a lot of people I actually got uh, a few um, comments about this one that Dayfly did this really fancy push and people again 
will look at the push that Dayfly is doing and say, oh, I want to do that push. And they'll try to do it. And again, just like a bad story, they will only have a beginning. They will only have a beginning to the story and they will not acknowledge the transition to the middle as what makes it very, very strong. So here is Dayfly doing the good old blockaroo. Zipux is getting a very early spawning pool. Looks like he got it around 12. We're not going to concern ourselves as much with Zipux. We're going to pop back here and note that, yes, he's doing something reasonable and good because Zipux is a reasonable and good player. But we want to emphasize what's going on in Dayfly Town. Uh, four and gas, less than good. But this barracks finished not long ago, and notice how he has just enough to be able to get his factory started right away. So that's one thing to note. Uh, you know, we see this with Zerg players a lot of times. If you build your um, Zerg refinery or